Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A large and emotional gathering tonight as the community mourns two parents shot and killed at a gas station while one of them was holding their baby. Larry? Federal funding coming to DPD. We're talking about more than $200,000, what they plan on doing with that money. All right, Larry, also new information on the gunfire that forced two schools into lockdown in Garden City. Police have made several arrests in what witnesses say was a road rage incident that spiraled way out of control. Glad you're with us at 11. Those who live along that stretch of Middle Belt will tell you car accidents there are not uncommon. But having a driving gun battle sure is, and it led to uh, Memorial Elementary and Lathers Elementary both being locked down. Mar McDonald live at Middle Belt and Cherry Hill. Mar, it may have ended at that gas station, but the <laughs> crime scene, what, stretched about a mile or so? Kimberly, as far as the eye could see down middle, bar, middle Belt, there were cars everywhere. And you're right, it did end at this gas station when two of the suspects in this case somehow ran from police, got in another car, and thought they were just going to hang out here until their luck ran out. Police spent hours out here reconstructing exactly what went down and what neighbors tell us is this Ford, without a plate, was having a road rage driving gun battle with this Buick when they cracked up at the intersection of Middle Belt and Marquette, hitting the driver of this yellow Jeep, who is an innocent bystander caught up in the madness. From what I understand, there were four people on foot, four kids running, all armed, and apparently they got three of them. Police in Garden City Schools put two schools in the immediate vicinity into lockdown. I was already at the school when I received that the school was on lockdown, so it was just kind of aggravating, waiting, sitting outside. Can I get my daughter? When can I get my daughter? What are the updates going to be? You know, there was no immediate threat that was, you know, shared with us. Parents waited about 40 minutes until police gave the all clear to lift the lockdown. Well, it's scary because you don't know where they're going to end up, you know, when someone's in that state of mind and they're armed and, you know, you don't know what they're thinking, what they're, where they're coming from, what they're doing. At least two of those involved in the shooting and crash hopped into this silver Ford after the wreck and ended up at this gas station where witnesses say they strolled in without a care in the world until police showed up and told them to get on the ground. Back here live, the latest from Garden City Police tonight is this. They've got four suspects in custody. They are looking for a fit. Nobody was hurt from any of the flying bullets. However, there are some injuries from that wreck. We're live in Garden City tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Okay, Mara, thanks. Tonight, more than 100 family members and friends gathered to honor a young couple gunned down at a Detroit gas station. Marche Nash and Benson Lindsay were murdered Monday night at a mobile gas station on the city's west side. Their baby was in the car when they were shot and killed. Tonight, family, friends, and classmates honor the couple with a candlelight prayer vigil in the neighborhood where she grew up. She was a wonderful spirit, and again, the outpouring of love that is here will continue, and we just ask everyone to continue to provide love and support for this wonderful family, and again, just uplift her name, Marche, and the class of 2018 and her school family here will not forget her at all. Two people have been arrested in connection with the couple's death, though so far no charges have been filed. Court records show actor Alec Baldwin was handed a loaded gun by an assistant director moments before he accidentally shot and killed a crew member. According to a search warrant, the assistant director did not know the prop gun was loaded with live rounds. Baldwin was on the set of his film Rust when he fired the prop gun and it hit 42-year-old cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Baldwin described the killing as a, quote, tragic accident. He says he's fully cooperating with the investigation. So far, no charges have been filed. More than $240,000 is coming from Washington to help Detroit police with one of their key initiatives. That funding is coming from the Department of Justice's Office of Community-Oriented Policing Services, also known as COPS. Larry Spruill, live tonight at Detroit PD uh, headquarters with a look at what the department plans on doing now with that money. Larry. Well, good evening, Deb, and I talked to a captain here who works with that mental health program here at DPD, and she says that this funding will allow them to expand the program and continue their commitment to the city. Chief White is, has been working with this um, 
for so long and he's very committed. Detroit Police Captain Tanya Leonard Gilbert says Chief White is all about mental health. That's why he supports all Detroit police officers to go through her crisis intervention team program. Training that focuses on people that are in crisis with a mental health nexus and so that they're better able equipped to go out and recognize, address, and resolve, hopefully, those that are uh, members that are calling from our community that fall in that, that criteria. It's a 40-hour block of training in partnership with Detroit Wayne Integrated Health Network. A lot of the members that are now serving in that capacity that have gone through the training are very excited. It gives us um, an added tool, if you will, in our tool belt. It's a tool they want to provide to all officers, not just the ones on the street. And soon, they will be able to do that with over $240,000 from a federal grant. To have this grant is amazing because it helps support us to be able to get this work done. So we're just like over the top with it. And last but not least, they're able to continue their main goal, and that's to protect and serve. So often you hear things of, you know, bridging the gap, partnering with the community. This is one more way that we're able to do it. And the captain says that funding will also allow them to hire somebody full time in the 911 center who is professionally trained in mental health. We are live at police headquarters tonight. Larry Sproul, local four. Yeah, all right, Larry. Well, Friday night high school football games were spared, but rain chances uh, are making the weekend look a little dicey here. Andrew's got a look here <laughs> with our first check of weather. Andrew. And Kimberly and Devin, mainly dicey for the end of the weekend as opposed to the beginning. Although overnight tonight, we will see a few raindrops that will still be around by dawn on your Saturday. Chilly out there with temperatures in the 30s and low 40s, anywhere from 37 in some of our colder spots like around Lapeer, 44 degrees at Metro, 40 degrees in Pontiac. Here's some of those rain showers that are off to our west. You can see a little spin here in the atmosphere right on top of Kalamazoo. This is tracking to the east and will cruise overhead during the overnight hours and by tomorrow morning. We're looking at 44 degrees right now over at Metro Airport, a light wind out of the northeast. Once again, we'll see a few sprinkles or widely scattered light rain showers overnight and by morning. So don't be surprised by a few wet conditions, not enough to keep you from getting out the door and starting your weekend off right. But make sure you bundle up because it will be chilly. Temperatures hover in the low 40s and upper 30s by tomorrow morning as well. Any more rain in store for tomorrow afternoon and Sunday? There is, and we'll break down the timing. And I've got your seven-day forecast in minutes. Okay, Andrew, thank you. A lead mobilization effort got underway in the tiny village of Manchester today following tests showing elevated lead levels in some water samples there. The state is offering lead testing and water filters to anybody who wants one. The village supervisor believes about 89 of Manchester's 800 homes appear to have lead service lines that need trading out. Washtenaw County Commissioner Shannon Beeman says she's been assured Manchester's lead issue is nowhere near the level of Flint or Benton Harbor. That is one of the concerns is that it's not quite obvious that there's something wrong with your water. It runs clear. You're not seeing debris in the water whatsoever. So there is that concern, but we just we aren't at those levels of those other areas. The results of the lead uh, take about a week or so to turn around and recipients will be notified with a phone call from the health department. There are new developments when it comes to COVID vaccines for children as our statewide case numbers continue to creep up. Michigan reports 7,505 new cases over the past two days. The average right now at 3,700 cases per day across the state. About 200 cases higher earlier than uh, or, or rather than earlier this week. 118 more deaths, though, also being reported. That includes 69 from a vital records review. On the vaccine front, state's vaccine rate stands at 68.5 percent. It has stubbornly hovered around that number for some time. Meanwhile, Pfizer says a recent trial of its COVID vaccine for children ages 5 to 11 shows the doses are more than 90 percent effective at preventing symptomatic cases of the virus. The next step for the FDA to review the material and make a recommendation and we expect that is going to happen sometime next week. All right, still ahead. She's five foot one with a passion for enforcing the law. But what happened after this woman became a deputy has her suing a mid-Michigan county and its sheriff. Plus, what prompted one man to take a hammer to his computer? The evidence investigators say he was trying to get rid of just ahead. And what was found inside this backpack? Worn in a rap video as a young man in trouble with the feds after a shooting in Pontiac.